The Senate has mandated immediate compliance with the Supreme Court's ruling on local government funding. A resolution was reached on the floor of the Senate on Wednesday after a debate on a motion by the lawmaker representing Anambra North, Toy Ngoye. In his lead debate, Senator Ngoye raised concerns about governors trying to enact laws to control local government funds illegally. Should state government, through their respective state House of Assembly, through their uh, different state and sovereign government, seek to enact laws, while some have already enacted laws and continue to take action that undermine the financial autonomy of local governments, thereby breaching the constitutional provision 1999 constitution, as well as the judgment of the Supreme Court. The Senate further concerned that the modus operandi of subverting this financial autonomy of local governments by state government through the House of Assembly is to insert clauses in their state laws that require local governments upon receipt of this federal allocation from federation account to remit all or majority or substantial part of the allocation to a dedicated account who the state government will keep control, will keep on controlling, managing, and disburse as they like. Across sections, uh, a cross section of lawmakers, including Senators Osita Izonazo and Adamo Aliero, underscored the urgency for adherence to judicial mandates to enhance transparency and accountability in local governance. In supporting this motion, I would like to recall that there is urgent need to amend Section 7 of 1999 Constitution as amended to further guarantee the autonomy of local government. This constitution says that local government is a third tier of government. We have three tiers of government in Nigeria, the federal, the state, and local government. So local government should be allowed to exercise that responsibility of a third tier of government. So in any attempt of any state, House of Assembly, trying to make law that will now mandate this revenue coming to local governments to be controlled by another account before the money gets to local government, I think is undermining the Supreme Court judgment. Uh, the court has already decided that the money of the local government councils should be released directly to the councils. And for us to start debating with it, it's going against the spirit of the constitution. Since that is already a constitutional provision to that effect. Two prayers are as follows. All states and local governments to fully comply with the recent Supreme Court judgment on the disbursement and utilization of funds accruing to all local governments in Nigeria. In his ruling, the Senate President Godswill Akpabio assured that the National Assembly will take immediate steps to alter sections of the Constitution to give full autonomy to local government administration in the country. Bordering on attempts to circumvent the ruling of the Supreme Court. And I want to thank all of you for your contributions and I assure you that the 10th Senate, working with our colleagues in the House of Representatives, will alter any aspect of our constitution, amend any section of our laws to ensure full autonomy, full autonomy to the local government administrations in this country so that it will be recognized fully in action and in fact as a third tier of government of the Federation. So I thank you for the motions so far moved. Um, point of order, Senator Binus, Yaro. Moving on, the House of Representatives has resolved to mandate the Committee on Constitutional Review to address delays in the nation's justice delivery system in order to restore confidence in the judiciary and report back within four weeks within for further legislative action. This followed the adoption of a motion on the need to restore confidence in the Nigeria's, in the nation's judiciary at plenary moved by 
Honorable Ganei Ayuba, a member representing the Limosha Federal Constituency in Lagos State. In the motion, Honorable Ayuba expressed worries that in some state, cases in trial courts that should be resolved within months usually last for four or five years before judgment is delivered, especially in long-term detentions of suspect, prolonged chieftaincy dispute and unresolved commercial litigation, which pose significant challenges to democratic and economic progress. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, one of the major problems we have with our justice delivery system, for example, today can be seen in the cases in our various correctional centers, prisons that were built or correctional facilities that were built to take, for example, 100 persons in the 70s, where facilities have not been expanded to today, have thousands of people languishing in them. And Mr. Speaker, of the number of persons in our correctional facilities, I can say without any form of doubt that over 60 to 70 percent are people who are awaiting trial. Some of them are in the correctional facilities for a period that is even longer than the time they would have been convicted for if they were eventually found guilty of such uh, alleged offenses. And by the principle of our constitution, now, contributors to the debate attributed prison congestion and dilapidated structures, as well as overstretching of the correctional services, as part of reasons for the lapses in the judiciary. Consider that, not to write the creation of this court, the delay still being expressed in the delivery of justice in our judicial system is highly alarming and gradually eroding the confidence of common man in judiciary. Mr. Speaker, he has worried that in some states of the Federation, cases are the high, the trial high court, which by their nature ought to be dispensed within, with within months, last between four to five years before judgment is delivered. I want to suggest, Mr. Speaker, that we amend the prayer to read that all the submissions that had to do with uh, this issue be submitted to the Constitutional Review. And the public hearing of the Constitution Review should prioritize this issue uh, that have been deliberated firmly by the House. I so also, at plenary, the House resolved to urge the federal government to, as a matter of urgency, implement the Export Prohibition Act of 2004 to curb food smuggling and insecurity in the country. Now, the resolution, among others, is sequel to a motion entitled Need to Curb Export Prohibition Act to Curb Insecurity in Nigeria, sponsored by Honorable Mukhtar Shagaya, member representing Ilori West Federal Constituency, in Kwara State. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.